In this unit I'm going to show you several different methods of moving elements around. I'm going to start off with simply dragging elements. So for this method we don't need to select the move tool. We'll look at that later on. So I've just got a very simple project, a couple of walls, some doors, a couple of tables in there and we're going to move these round by the different methods. So with no command selected at all I can simply hover over an element like this wall, click and hold my left mouse button and drag the wall to where I want. Likewise with one of these tables, so I don't need to select it first, just hover over the element until it highlights, click and hold the left mouse button and simply drag and let go to place the object in the new position. Now the only problem with this method, as you can see, is that it's not very precise. I do have temporary dimensions that I can activate once I've repositioned an element. And as we've seen before, I can just click in one of these and put in an exact figure. But when I'm actually in the process of dragging an element, I can't adjust those temporary dimensions at the same time. So it's a case of just dragging it by eye to where I need it to be and dropping it down. Then I could fine tune its position if need be. So as a real rough and ready tool, the move by dragging uh, is probably the way to go, but you do lack some precision in using that method. Now we've just seen with this dragging method how we don't need to first select an object in order to drag it, we just hover over and we can left click hold uh, which basically has the effect of selecting it and dragging it at the same time. Now the plus side of that is it's a very quick method um, of moving objects around. The downside is that it's quite easy to accidentally move something when you don't mean to. So thankfully we have a toggle on Revit which can actually disable that function and it makes us ensure that we need to select the object first before moving it. So if we look down at the bottom right hand side of the interface, right in the corner down here, we have a toggle here, drag elements on selection. Now at the moment that's set to on, which allows us to click and drag in one go as we've just been doing. But if I turn that toggle off, I guess a little red cross next to it, which means it's disabled, we now can't just click and drag. We need to actually select it first, then we can drag it. So just be aware of that toggle down the bottom corner there. Drag elements on selection. The next method we're going to look at is nudging elements normally used when you need to move an element a very small distance. So first of all we need to select an object, so I'll select this desk. So now it's selected. Now to use the, the nudge tool or to, to nudge elements we simply use the cursor keys. So the limitation of this method is it only works in obviously four directions up, down, left or right on your screen. Uh, I'm just going to nudge this desk upwards and if you look very carefully on screen you will see the desk making its way up vertically up the screen that's moving with every tap of the upward cursor key on my keyboard likewise you can move it over to the left now the distance that it moves with each press of a cursor key is zoom specific so if I zoom right in on this desk and now nudge it up, you can see it's very small increments of 10 mil at a time. You can see that temporary dimension going down in value. However, if I zoom right out and nudge it back down, you can see it's moving in much greater increments.
And the final method I want to show you is the use of the actual move tool itself. Now the move tool can be found on the modify panel on the ribbon. So let's look at how that works now. So let's go ahead and move this section of wall. So first of all I need to select the element. So select my wall, then select the move tool. Now the use of the move tool is a two click operation and I need to basically define the displacement between where the object is now and where it needs to end up. So I'm just going to click on the corner of the wall and as I move my cursor, let's zoom in a little, you can see a boundary around where the object is going to move to which follows my cursor and click to move the object to that new position. Now that displacement doesn't have to start on the object itself. What I mean by that um, is really easy to actually show you. Just let's move this desk over to the left now. Let's say I need to move this desk the distance between the centers of those, those two doors there. So select the desk, select the move tool. So the starting point could be the center line of the door. Let's find that now. And you can see as I make my way towards the other door, the ghost image following that displacement path. And find the center of the other door. And the desk has moved by that distance accordingly. I can also, if I select that, let's say that desk there, hit the move tool, pick a start point. I can also just specify an exact distance I need it to move. So if I want to move the desk three and a half meters vertically, I can actually now type in on the keyboard 3500, hit the return key, and the desk will move accordingly. Just a couple more things on that move tool before we finish. Select a desk again, hit the move tool. Just want you to notice these two options on the options bar here. The first one being constrain. If I turn that on and I now go to move the object, it will only move vertically and horizontally on screen. So it constrains it to horizontal and vertical movements. It can be useful sometimes. And the other option we saw in the options bar, if I select this piece of wall and bring up the move tool again, was the option to disjoin. I'll just turn that constraint off now. Now, if I don't turn that disjoint on, and I go and move this wall, for example, the other wall that it's attached to lengthens to keep that join intact. If I want to move this wall away and not have that other wall stay joined to it, I need to disjoin the two elements. So select the first wall again, hit move, turn on disjoin. Now I can separate the object that I'm moving from the one it's connected to. And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point, you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.